Glory to God. Welcome everyone to Arise Family Church where we help people find life, enjoy life, and win in life. We've been on a series called The Reborn Identity, Who Are You? And so a couple of weeks ago we talked about, well we've been talking about, we've been talking about our identity and we've been talking about that we have been made the righteousness of God in Him and there are four areas of righteousness that we have focused on in this series. And one is identity, one is royalty, uh, one is justice, and the last one of the four is prosperity. And so, uh, uh, I guess a, a couple sessions ago, we talked about prosperity is right. We spent the whole, the whole service talking about prosperity is right from the Word of God, not just our opinion. And then last time, we talked about prosperity is good. Prosperity is good. And I ended off saying this, that being rich is good. From the Word of God, we can see that being rich is good. It's not bad. It's not against God, and it's not against His will, and it's not contrary to the Word of God. Being rich is good. And then I can hear people's minds going, yeah, but I know some rich people who are not good, who are bad. And I, I said, I understand that. But that's not what I said. What I said is being rich is good. Okay? Literally, it's just a truth that we must embrace to enjoy in our own lives. Being rich is good. What I did not say is being rich makes you good. Because then the, what will be inferred is being poor would make you bad. And that's not what I'm saying. That's not what's being said. That's not what the Word of God teaches. There are bad rich people and there are bad poor people. There are good rich people and there are good people, uh, poor people. So it's being rich does not make you good or bad. Being rich is good. It's the person that has the riches. What kind of person that person is, is only amplified by an increase of wealth. So if they're, if they're good, an increase of wealth and being rich would only be able to amplify their goodness and cause their goodness to um, be shared and seen and experienced and enjoyed by many others. Uh, the opposite is true. If you've got a bad person who is wealthy and rich, their badness then spills over and affects other people's lives. So, so uh, riches don't make you good. They don't make you bad. They just amplify what kind of person you are. But what I was talking about and what we've been talking about based on the Word of God is being rich is good because people have the idea because they see a bad rich person that being rich is bad and that's called throwing the baby out with the bathwater and you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater you want to keep the baby you want to get rid of the bathwater amen and so we don't throw out rich just because some rich people are bad because they are wicked no 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 because uh, why don't you keep rich? Because there are some good rich people and they are doing great things. But people don't want to do that. We're not going to keep rich because there's good people. No, no, no. We want to throw rich away because there's some bad rich people. That doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It's one, it, you got you to keep them both or you don't. So well, what are we going to do? We'll just uh, stick with the Word of God, which says being rich is good. Hallelujah. So now let's work on us and continue to work on our character. And that's what we've been talking about in this series about identity. About royalty. About justice. And now we've been talking about prosperity. Luke chapter 4 verse 18, Jesus said this. He's quoting from Isaiah, but Luke 4.18 Jesus says this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Matter of fact, he specifically found this scripture and read it that day in the synagogue. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, oppressed, and crushed 
and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, jubilee, debt freedom, and full restoration. But he said, listen, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news, to the poor. And what's good news to the poor? Being rich is good. Being rich is good. Being rich is not just for a select few. Being rich is good, and it's available to all. Good news. You don't have to be poor anymore. Poverty is not something that you are stuck in. Yet people find themselves stuck in it. Why? Because they don't know how to get out. So that's what we've been talking about the last couple of services. Sharing scriptures to change the way we think. Because that's the first way that we begin to get out of where we find ourselves stuck in. Because the Holy Spirit through the, the Apostle John said this. He said, I wish above all things, I pray above all things, I desire above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So we must be, must be in this process and this desire and this action of renewing our minds with the Word of God, changing the way we think so we can change the way we act. That's called prospering our soul. And so we talked about that um, a, a number of services ago. And so let's go ahead and pick up again Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. Proverbs 10 and verse 22. Today we want to talk about the blessing of the Lord. Proverbs 10 22 says this, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. See, in the world, the world there is a way, and there is, there is a sorrow, there is a struggle, there is a sweat, there is um, a painful toil and sweat in order to becoming rich. There's a struggle. But God said, with the blessing of the Lord, He makes us rich. And the word rich there is, is a progressive word, meaning it, richer and richer and richer and richer. It's not just rich, it's not just a final destination. Now, when you get rich, then there's, there's a, another richer, and there's another richer. Uh, and if you go, well, that, that, sounds really, that sounds really bad, you know? Well, Let's find out what God did. And we actually have already read this before. But if we just go back to uh, Genesis. Twenty-six. And I just want to read this again. Like people think, well, you know, if you're going to get rich and then you want to get richer yet. I mean, what? That's, that's really greedy and selfish. No, that's called growth. That's called... Um, uh, going from one degree of glory to another. It's called increasing more and more. This is what God has for us. And it says here that Isaac, verse 12, Isaac sowed in that land in the midst of a famine, uh, actually, and, and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed him. It didn't say, didn't say Abraham manipulated and schemed until he, he got a um, hundredfold. No, he... You shouldn't even be planting in famine. If nothing grows in famine. There's no increase in famine. But he did it at the word of the Lord. And the Lord blessed him. And he reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And verse 13 says this, The man began to prosper. And he continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Now the New American Standard says this, that, that he, he, um, he, he became rich and continued to get richer until he became very wealthy. So there's this progression. In God, there's always this progression. In God, we're always growing and increasing more and more. Hallelujah. So, the blessing of the Lord makes us rich. Richer and richer and richer. Hallelujah. And He adds no sorrow to it. No painful toil and sweat and struggle to it. In other words, we're not having to do it all in our own strength, in our own ability. We have his help. Why? Because being rich is good. 
God is on our side. He wants to. He takes pleasure. We already found this out. We've already read these scriptures. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of those who serve him. Hallelujah. He wants to help us. And so, let's, let's find out what some of these words mean. Instead of just throwing them around. What does the word blessing mean? The blessing of the Lord makes rich. What does the word blessing mean? Um, the, the, the Hebrew words translated blessing can also be translated this way. Literally, benediction and favor resulting in prosperity and good of every kind. Blessing. Benediction and favor resulting in prosperity and good of every kind. That's why being rich is good. That's why being rich is right. It's part of the blessing of the Lord. Benediction and favor resulting in prosperity and good in every, of every kind. It means benefits. It means a gift or present and a bountiful person. A bountiful person does what? He's a, they're a blessing. A bountiful person is a blessing. Why? Because they're blessed. It's hard to be a blessing. It's hard to be bountiful when there's no bounty. It's hard to help the poor when you're poor. It's just very, it's just very weird to think we need to be poor, and yet we're supposed to help the poor. You can't help the poor being poor. You can't be a blessing without enjoying blessing. What does it mean in the Greek? Blessing in the Greek means this, fine speaking. Because there's a, there's a couple different words, but basically a couple of these different words is where we would get our English word eulogy from. It means to speak good, fine speaking, say something nice, <laughs> right? So the Greek word blessing can be translated fine speaking, benefit, bounty, bounty, and bountiful. So you've got to have some bounty in order to be bountiful. And it means to prosper. The word blessing is full of prosperity. What about the word rich? The blessing of the Lord makes rich. The word rich means this, to accumulate, to grow rich, to be or become rich or enriched. Right? So there's this, this progression, this growth. To be or become rich or enriched or richer and, and more enriched. It means to make self rich. And it means abundance. And just interesting, we'll get into this, but to make self rich means that it's going to require some effort, some thinking, and some action on our behalf. God is not doing it all. The blessing of the Lord makes us rich, but, but it's because we're working together with Him. We're not just sitting in our hammock with our iced tea and He just causes it to float down from heaven. No, there's, there's some action, there's some, there's some preparation, there's some planning, there's some working together with Him to experience and enjoy the blessing of the Lord, the prosperity that He places on us because of the blessing. So, since the blessing is fine speaking, um, the blessing is released in words. Right? That's what it means to bless. And God blessed them. What does that mean? He, he said something. The blessing is released in words to bless and results in an empowerment to prosper. The blessing is released in words. If we go to Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, and we see in verse 3 it says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So now some people will say, see, it's just talking about a spiritual blessing, spiritual things. Well, 
let's just um, find out from the Greek what is being said here. He has blessed us. That word bless means to prosper. To prosper. He has blessed us. He has prospered us. How? With every spiritual blessing. Now the word spiritual blessing, the word blessing is fine speaking. In other words, what he has said. And the word spiritual means divinely supernatural. So, Jesus said this about the Word of God. He said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. God's Word is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It is supernatural. It is spiritual. It came from God. God spoke His Word. So, the blessing is released in words. And we are blessed and prospered with every spiritual or divinely supernatural blessing of fine speaking. In other words, God's words, this is supernatural, divinely supernatural, spiritual words. He's blessed us, He's empowered us to prosper by every word that He has spoken and released from heaven. So when the Holy Ghost inspired these men to write, this is God breathed. This word is inspired from God. God breathed. This is what He said. This is God's word. He prospers us by every word that He has spoken to us. So this book lets us know what His will and His plan is, and we take hold of this, it will cause us to prosper in whatever area we are studying, whatever area we are taking a hold of, whatever area we are speaking and agreeing and believe and taking hold of. If we're, if we're taking hold of healing words, it'll prosper our physical body with healing and health and strength and energy and life. If it's talking about our finances, as we're talking about here, this word will affect us financially. It will prosper and increase us in our finances. Hallelujah. So whatever area it might be, God has blessed us. He has prospered us with every spiritual, divinely supernatural word that He has spoken to and for us. So, God's word is key to our prosperity. God's word is key to our prosperity. Genesis 1.28. We've already gone through this, read this. I just want to touch on it one more time. Genesis 1.28, And God blessed them and said... See, the blessings released in words. And God blessed them, and God said. This is how the blessing was released. This is how He empowered them to prosper. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. And so once again, He blessed them. It's released in words. He said, be fruitful. To grow, to bear fruit, to increase. Be fruitful and multiply. Multiply. To increase. To have an abundance. To be in authority. To enlarge, excel. To uh, be full of. To make greater. To give more. To gather, to yield much more, to multiply, to be plenteous over the process of time. So this multiplication is over the process of time. There's this progression again. Be fruitful, multiply, fill up the earth, or replenish means to accomplish, to confirm, to fail, to overflow, to gather, to furnish, to replenish, to satisfy. 
We talked about this, how a number of these things and how this all can tie in with business and, and financial increase. Subdue. Subdue means to tread down, to conquer, to force, to keep under, to subdue, to bring into subjection. Hallelujah. And then have dominion is to tread down, to make to have dominion, to prevail against, to reign, to rule. So there is a dominion, a reigning and a ruling over is a result of having or the above blessing to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, and to subdue. God blessed them and said. The blessing is released in words. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Psalm 115, I'll read out of the King James, starting in verse 12, says, The Lord has been mindful of us, and He will bless us. Hallelujah. He will bless us. In verse 13, because He will bless us, uh, he's speaking over us. The blessing's released in words, and the blessing releases and, and uh, empowers us to prosper. Verse 13 says, He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. There is no one left out. He will bless them. He will bless them that fear the Lord, honor, reverence, respect, and see Him. That's what the word fear means. Both small and great. Verse 14, The Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children. Can you see this? Once again, there's this progression. There is this, there is this, um, this, this going from one degree to another degree. This, over the process of time, He is increasing us more and more. Getting richer and richer. Hallelujah. For you are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. And he's doing what? Increasing us more and more. That's what the blessing does. That the blessing will increase us more and more. It makes us richer and richer. He's empowering us to prosper. We're blessed of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth he has given to the children of men. In other words, we've been, function, we've been authorized and, um, to function and operate here. He's given the earth to us. We need to do something. We need to do something. It's in our hands. We are blessed to the Lord who made heaven and earth. And He's making us richer and richer, increasing us. More and more. Why? That's, that's the blessing of the Lord. Can you see how this, once again, this is tied in. This is the blessing of the Lord. Not just our desire, but it's the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Galatians 3.13. Galatians 3.13. We're just going to jump back one more page. Galatians 3.13 says this. Christ has redeemed us. From the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Why? Verse 14, So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles or the nations in Christ Jesus or because of Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit or the promise that the Spirit of God made by faith. So I want you to see something that... Verse 8 says that God would justify the Scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles or the nations by faith. He did what? He preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, In you shall all nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing or faithful Abraham. So we see here, this is the promise that the Spirit of God preached to Abraham. The promise was the gospel. The gospel is the blessing. 
the promise is the blessing. And the blessing has come on us because of Jesus, and it's received by faith. So it can be on us or available to us, but if we don't receive it by faith, it will do nothing for us. We will be left out, or it will not accomplish anything in our lives. It's being made available to us because of Jesus, who we are in Christ, because of Jesus. This is part of our identity. This is what we've been talking about. Who are we in Christ? Our identity. This is who we are. We are rich in Christ. We are blessed in Christ. We are prospered in Christ. This is who we are in Christ. That's why being rich is good, and we need to renew our mind with that because this is what has been made available to us in Christ. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. He paid the price to set us free from the curse, but He also paid the price to purchase the blessing for us, our access to it, our legal right to enjoy it. And we receive it by faith. By faith. So the blessing and the cursing is actually demonstrated and, and revealed to us in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28. And so the blessing is really revealed to us in the first 15 verses. So let's read through those. Um, and if you read through the curse, you find out what you've been redeemed from. But we're not going to go there. Um, we want to stay focused on where we are today. And, and the blessing um, very much talks about prosperity. And then the curse very much talks about sickness. So we can see there's, there's, the curse is threefold. We found out because of sin, when Adam sinned, the curse came. And because of sin, um, sickness came. And because of sin, part of the curse is also poverty or lack. And so the curse is threefold, which would mean the blessing is also threefold. And so God has dealt with a sin problem in Christ. The price has been paid. So now what? We can be made the righteousness of God. Sin has separated us from God. The blood of Jesus has now purchased our reconciliation we have been redeemed the price has been paid now we have been made righteous we've been made right we have right standing with God we've not been now we've not been separated from him but we can receive right standing with him so instead of sin there is righteousness instead of sickness there is healing and health amen and instead of poverty there is prosperity glory to God threefold threefold. So we see here, verse 28, chapter 28, verse 1 says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. So we need to be diligent to obey. We need to observe carefully. So we must see God's Word, and we must see how to apply it and put it to work in our lives. We must observe. We must, must see how we can be doers of the Word. How does this apply to my life today? It's not just a good read. It's not just a good book. It's, not, it's, it's something, it's a manual on how to live and enjoy life how to find life, enjoy life, and win in life. That, that's what this is. And so we need to be doers of it and not just memorizers of it. So we need to observe carefully all these commands. Why? So that He is able to set us high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings, say blessings. blessings. All these blessings shall come upon you and they will overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Obedience. Obedience. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Hallelujah. The blessing's working. 
in the city, in the country. It makes no difference. The blessing is working. The empowerment to prosper is working on our behalf. We, we can't not separate ourselves from it. We, we can't get too far out in the city, in the country, wherever we are. The blessing can work on our behalf as we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Verse 4, Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your grounds, and the increase of your herds, and the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. This is talking about our business. This is talking about our, our occupation. This is talking about our income. That's what, the, that's, what, that's what this is talking about. The blessing. The blessing. You and your family will be blessed. Everything you put your hand to will be blessed. Verse 5, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. This is, this is our bank accounts, our storage places. Hallelujah. We can expect the blessing to cause increase. In our bank accounts, our storage places. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. So coming in and going out in the city, in the country, wherever we are, coming, going, going, coming. The blessing is at work on our behalf. The blessing, blessed shall you be. We're blessed. We're blessed when we come in. We're blessed when we go out. In the city, in the country, verse 7. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. This is part of the blessing. Uh, they shall come against you one way, and they will flee before you seven ways. This is, this is a result of the blessing on our lives. Is when there is an attack that comes against us one way. If we listen and obey the voice of the Lord our God, these things will scatter scatter. They will not succeed. They will not overcome or overtake us. But the Lord will cause our enemies that rise up against us to be defeated and scatter before us. Verse 8, the Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses, in your bank accounts, and in all that you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. He's going to command the blessing on our bank accounts, our storage places. And He will command the blessing where? In everything that we set our hand to. In other words, we must be doing something. In order for, him to, in order for the blessing to operate in our lives, we must be doing something. We must be setting our hand to something. If we don't do anything, the blessing has nothing to bless. The blessing has nothing to empower, to prosper. The, the blessing has nothing to work with or work on. So we must be doing something. We must, this is our part, we must put our hands to something. Set our hands to something. Set our feet to something. Set, set our, our mouth, our speaking to something. We, we must be doing something. Verse 9, the Lord will establish you a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. We will be a holy people. The word holy means separated, set apart. I like the word distinguished. Verse 10, then all peoples of the earth, they shall, um, all, all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you, or they shall be in awe of you. Why? Because we are a holy people to God. We are separated, distinguished, we're set apart. And they'll see something on us that they don't have. And they will be in awe of us. Because they recognize that we are called by the name of the Lord. And the good news is, is they too can become called by the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is not a respecter of persons. It's available to everyone. Verse 11, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods. I think King James says plenteous of good. Plenteous. Will be plenty. Lots. More than enough. In the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Once again, this is just very similar to what we see back in verse 4. This is talking about 
that what we're putting our hands to, our business, our income, our employment, our occupation, is this kind of stuff. The Lord will grant to us plenty and abundance, increase because of the blessing. Verse 12, the Lord will open to you as good treasure, the heavens to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. So we must have, hmm, see the rain on your land. The rain on your land, how is it going to cause blessing and increase if nothing has been sown? So it's not just having the land that is, um, that's the key. Uh, that's the first part. Have the land, but then we need to do something with the land. We must sow in the land. We must prepare it for the rain. So some increase can come from it. Amen? Because he's going to bless. But if there's nothing to men planted, the rain is going to, you know what it's going to do? It's going to produce weeds. Something's going to grow. But if we haven't planted what we want, something will grow that we didn't want. So we need to plant. We need to get ready. We need to decide what we want. And then plant it. Put our hands to work. And he will bless the work of our hands. And you shall lend to many nations, and you shall not borrow. You shall lend to many nations. You shall invest. Lending. Investing. Right? When you invest, you are lending your money, and you're exchanging it. There's an exchange. There's a, um, an increase. There is, there is a result for our lending, there is a result, an increase. Lending, investing, there is a return. And you will not borrow. He's not saying it's a sin to borrow. He's saying you won't have to. See, borrowing is not wrong. Borrowing is not sin. Borrowing is something that the world needs. Because they don't have the blessing. And so we can borrow, but what's going to separate or set us apart from everyone else? We get to the point where we don't have to borrow. You can borrow if you want, but you don't have to. We don't have to. This is the plan of God. This is part of the blessing of Abraham. The blessing that God preached and declared that we receive by faith. That we can lend, we can invest, and we should have plenty. We should have more than enough. So that we don't have to borrow. If you want to borrow, it's your option. But we don't have to. Verse 13. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and you are careful to observe them. Hallelujah. So I guess that's verses 1 to 13. The blessing of the Lord. The blessing of Abraham comes on us because of Jesus and we receive it by faith and this is what the blessing looks like in our lives. As co-laborers with God, His blessing is on our work. His blessing is on, what do we see twice in this portion of Scripture? What we put our hands to. What we put our hands to. The blessing, as co-laborers with God, His blessing is on our work what we put our hands to. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17 says this, verse 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man or the person who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength or his source. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in the salt land which is not inhabited. That sounds dry. That sounds like it's not such a good place. And no one won't even see it. He said you won't even see good. It'll completely pass you by. You won't, able to, you won't, you won't, you won't see it. You won't, it won't, you won't get it. It'll be standing right in front of you and you will not see it. The opportunity will open its door right in front of us and we'll not see it. 
if we trust in people and make people our source. Verse 7, but blessed is the person who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Our trust and our hope and our confidence is in Him. He shall be the person who trusts in the Lord and puts his hope in the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, constantly being fed and increasing, always having a source of supply. And we see here, uh, his, it will spread out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. The word fear in the Hebrew also means to see. So different translations will have the word fear and other ones will have the word see. My cross reference actually has the word see in there. The fear of the Lord means to see the Lord. So it's interesting that the person who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord, he will not fear when heat comes. Why? Because he will not see the heat. What is he going to see? He's going to see the Lord as his source and provider. He will see and trust in the Lord. He will see the Lord. He will see the good. He will see the opportunity. When he comes, he will not be afraid. Why? Because of what he sees, glory to God. But his leaf will be green, even in the midst of famine, even in the midst of when the heat comes. And will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. We shall continually yield fruit, because blessed is the man, the woman, the person who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is in the Lord. Verse 9. Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, even to give everyone according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So we see here, there is a test. The Lord said, I search the hearts and I test the mind. Why? So I can give. So I can give. So if people don't pass the test, God cannot give. So it's important that we pass the test. Because God has something for us. He wants to give us something. It's called harvest. Harvest. Even to give everyone according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. That's called harvest. It's called justice. He wants to set things right, put things right, and make things right. But he can only do it if we pass the test. And we can see here that one of the ways that we pass the test is what or who, in this case, we put our trust in. And who our hope is in. Because blessed is the person who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. So we pass the test so God can give us our harvest. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Amen? And so I want to close with this. Let's close with Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, and I want to read verse 18. We will close right here. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says this, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant which He swore to your fathers as it is this day. So what do we see here? God said He is the one who has given us the power to get wealth. It does not say that He's given us wealth. It doesn't say he's going to give us wealth. As if the responsibility and all the work is in his responsibility. It's, it's like the ball is in his side of the court. Well, no, 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 no. He's blessed us. That's his side of the court. Now, now the ball is on our court. I mean, the ball is on our side. Now, we, we, what's our responsibility? He said He's given us the power. He's empowered us. Amen. He's given us the power to do what? To get wealth. So we need to set our hands to something. We need to be doing something. The word power in the Hebrew means this. The power, the ability, and the anointing. He's given us the power, the ability, and the anointing. 
So it doesn't say he's given us wealth. He's given us the power. He's given us the ability. He's given us the anointing. He has blessed us. God has blessed us. He's blessed us. He has blessed us. To do what? To get wealth. The word get in the Hebrew means this. To get, to obtain, and to make wealth. So he's given us the power and the ability and the anointing. Why? So we can do something. So we can do something, and in our doing something, the blessing has something to work with. The blessing has something to begin to manifest and demonstrate and create something. The blessing wants to create prosperity in our lives. And so God has given us the blessing. He's given us the power, the ability, the anointing. And now it's our responsibility to go get, obtain, and make the wealth. And the blessing enables us to do that on a higher level. The blessing of the Lord makes us richer and richer. And adds no sorrow to it. See, it's not the struggle like those without the blessing. But as children and citizens of the family of God and the kingdom of God, we have the blessing, we have this empowerment, this enablement that now helps us do the doing on a higher level than the world that does not have it. The wisdom, the power, the ability, the, 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 the ideas, the concepts. It's God has given us the power to get wealth. The power, the ability, the anointing to get, obtain, and to make wealth. So, in closing, this is the blessing at work. This is the blessing at work in our lives. Whether we're coming in, whether we're going out, whether we're in the city, whether we're in the country, it makes no difference. It's His desire to make us the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. This is the blessing at work on our behalf. He's given us the power, the ability, the anointing to get, to obtain, and to make wealth. Choice is ours. Hallelujah. We'll pick up here next week.